everyone is um, logged in now and we're ready to start. Thank you very much. So my name is Tina Adams. I'm one of the lecturers in the child care and education department. Um, and what I'd like to do is to welcome you to our department. I'm going to go through our curriculum offer. Um, I'm going to share our contact details. And at the end of this, we're going to have a, um, a Q&A session where you can answer any questions and um, I can answer you and point you in the right direction. So Barnet and Southgate College offers a comprehensive programme of childcare courses for all levels over a range of campuses. So we're at Wood Street in Barnet, at Southgate, Collindale, and also within the Haringey community. So starting at level one for those beginning their childcare studies and moving all the way up to employment ready high level qualifications. Within our department, we have experienced staff who've all worked in the um, childcare setting, be that early years or primary teachers such as myself. And we're now teaching students because we're so passionate about our, our um, sessions. So this is our Barnet Southgate website link. On the side, you'll see a QR link and it will take you straight there. On the courses page, we've got the full time study program and also the part time for mature students. And I'm just going to take a moment to go through each of these. So the full time and the part time. Just to let you know, our awarding body is NCFE cash. So we're going to start off with I'm just going to. Um, move my face down but I'll leave it there. Level one cash diploma in caring for children 16 to 18 year olds. Now these are study programs, they're full-time study programs for 16 to 18 year olds. So what you'll need to study at the level one is two GCSEs at grade two to three or above including English language. I'm just going to point out the big orange box so you can apply online through the website after this session. Then we're going to look at the level two diploma for early years practitioners again a study program for 16 to 18 year olds at Wood Street. Now for the level two you'll need three GCSEs at grade three and that includes math and English language should be at a grade four or five. Level three diploma for the early years workforce. Again, study program, 16 to 18 year olds based at Wood Street. So this is a level three diploma. This is a one year course, okay, which will enable you to be, um, have a license to practice within an early year setting. So you require five GCSEs for a level three diploma, including English language at a grade four and five or functional skills level two. So then we come to our technical level three diploma in childcare and education. And that's the early years educator. And I'm actually one of the lecturers on this course. So if you're into if you're 16 to 18 and you're interested in studying um, early years, please come and uh, book an interview with us. It will probably be myself or Joanna Murchison that will interview you. So the good thing about this course is it's a two year course and it allows you to gain UCAS points, which will allow you to go on to higher education and do a university course. So for this, we require you to have five GCSEs at grade four or five or above. And that includes your English language and maths. So with the level ones, two and three, there's some common units that are covered. So child development, children's health and well-being, observation, assessment and planning, health and safety, safeguarding, play and learning, providing safe environments for children. So these are some of the many units that are covered. So if we have a look at work placements, a part of a study programme, you are in college and you also go to a work placement. So you're practising all the skills that you learn within the classroom. So we have a designated work placement officer who will arrange a setting for all 16 to 18 study programme students. Please note that mature students aged 19 plus must secure their own placement and arrange to pay for a DBS. The good news is many of our students go on to be employed within their settings. So let's look at English and maths. 
So part of your study programme, if you are aged 16 to 18 and do not hold a GCSE grade four or above, maths and English will be embedded within your timetable. So it means that you'll be you'll be in class for two days, you'll be in um, setting, but you'll also have maths and English. You'll be able to get that grade four um, GCSE maths and English. If you're a mature student, you can also select maths and English functional skill or GCSE pathway, but you would need to organise that yourself. So let's have a look at the uh, curriculum offer for our mature students. So remember, this is anyone over 19. Again, there's a QR um, link there that which will take you straight to our, um, our web page for childcare and education. So the courses for mature students are located across the different campuses. So we're at Wood Street Barnet, we're at Southgate, we're at Collindale and within the community. So that's the Haringey Consortium. There's different specialisms, uh, early years, preparing to work in school, supporting teaching and learning, and also childminding. So when you go onto the website, this is what you see. You, you see a whole list of level one, two, and three. And I'm just going to break that down. Um, so level one, part-time courses for mature students over 19. So we have an introduction to early year setting. Um, this is at Wood Street and at Collindale campus. Now this is a short course, it's 18 weeks where you attend one day a week. So it's a really good, as it says, an introduction to early years. So if it's new to you, this is a very welcoming and um, a slower paced course. Then we have a level one preparing to work in schools. So it might be that you've been at home, you've been home teaching your children and you think, actually, I really enjoy this. I think I'd like to maybe change careers and go into a school setting. So to prepare you for that, there's an 18 week course uh, where you go one day a week. And that is almost your first stepping stone to being a teaching assistant because we do level ones, two and three. Then we have a level one cash diploma in caring for children. Again, mature students. This is at Wood Street campus. Now this is at one day a week, but it's from September through to the end of June. So this isn't a short course. So if you are looking for working in early years, caring for children, this is your very first stop. So let's have a look at level two part-time courses. So we've got the cash diploma for the early years practitioner. Now this is based at Collindale, Edmonton, and also Wood Street Campus, because as you can see, it's a really popular course. Then we've got the level two cash certificate for supporting teaching and learning. Now I'm the course leader for that. So if you have any questions, um, ask me late afterwards, or you can contact me on my email address. So we have um, supporting teaching and learning courses at Southgate and Wood Street Campus. So level three part-time courses. There's a level three award in education and training. It's a short course, that's 12 weeks. Then we've got a level three um, child minding course again, that's 12 weeks. Um, just to go back to the, um, the award in education and training, that's if you want to have an introduction to teaching um, up to 19, 16 plus. So you're talking about um, in further education. So that's an award, that's a 12 week introduction there. So going back to the child minding, that's for uh, newly registered child minders. Again, that's a 12 week course. And there's also um, a setting set up in Hackney for that. So we have um, early years workforce, which is a level three and a level three um, supporting teaching and learning. So that is, um, we like you to have a level two before you go on to the level three courses. So for both the early years workforce and the supporting teaching and learning, the specialist support, you would need to complete the level two before you come on to the level three. But if you have any questions, just ask me and we can have a conversation about that. So for all courses, when you enroll, you can access the Microsoft package for free. This incorporates Word, PowerPoint, OneDrive and Office 365. Everything is submitted through our online platform online. And the teaching delivery can be a mixture of face-to-face -face and online. 
So what do we expect from our students? As you can imagine, we're really passionate about our child, about childcare. And this means we want our students to achieve the very best. We expect you to attend all of your lessons, have a positive attitude and a willingness to learn. And actually a passion to work with children always helps. So the work placement is an important element of your course. It's important that you attend these um, weekly placements. You have a timesheet that you get signed because this will embed your knowledge and understanding of your course. So some student good news stories. So many of our students become employed by nurseries whilst they are on placement within the setting. We've previously had students employed by Barnet Southgate College after they successfully completed the level two and level three supporting teaching and learning programme. So there's, there's always opportunities to become employed. With the supporting teaching and learning, I always invite agencies to come in and speak to our students because that enables them to see a route into work. We have a former mature student uh, that spoke about her time at Barnet Southgate College. Now it helped her set up her very own business, setting up a nursery on the green in 14 in Southgate. And she completed the cash level two certificate in introduction in early years, education and care, and then went on to the level three. So that just shows you that level two is a really important level to um, give you that initial knowledge understanding before you go on to the level three. So who to contact? Who's the course leaders? So there's me at the bottom, Tina Adams at barnetsouthgate.ac.uk. I'm the course leader for all the supporting teaching and learning. So there's level one, two and three. We've got Sinead Hennessy. She's the childcare um, course leader for the Haringey community. And at the top there, Joanna Murchison, who's a childcare course leader for levels one, two and three. So what we're going to do now is we're going to have a, a question and answer session. So um, don't be shy, ask me any questions um, and I can point you in the right direction. Thank you very much. Okay, so what course do I need to become an SEN teaching assistant? So first of all, I would say, do you have experience working in schools within a school setting? We always ask you that within your um, within your interview. So you would I would say do start off with the level two teaching assistant course and then you go into the level three that has a specialized unit. And then you've got a, you've got two years knowledge and understanding. You've got the level three diploma and also just bearing in mind with those level three diplomas for the teaching assistant, you are then able to go progress on to higher education because they're level three diploma. Um, it, I would say get a, um, a placement within a setting that gives you opportunities to work with children with SEND. Thank you. Um, but email me about that because I'm happy to um, give you um, some ideas. Uh, what's the fee and how can I join in? I've studied school in Pakistan and have done functional skills level two English math. So this depends on which course you're looking at, whether you are a mature student or whether you are a 16 to 18 student that's starting on our study programs. So on our study program, generally you don't, uh, there isn't a fee. Um, and for mature students, if you there, it depends if you are in receipt of benefit. That is something that you would look at, um, go online and then we could ask the question and we can help you further with that for your own specific um, situation. So Laura, Laura, can I go straight on to level two teaching assistant course without doing level one first of all? Yeah, I mean, everyone is different. So as long as um, you have, I would say it's the level of assignments that you would need to do as long as you have um, your English language is able to cope with a level two qualification. Um, we would do a written task anyway. Um, so within the interview, but a lot of people can go straight onto the level two teaching assistant, especially if they've got some um, 
placement experience. So it might be if you're able to get some placement experience now, going back to now the schools are opening, if you can get some placement experience, then by the time you come into us um, for an interview, you say, I've already got my placement, you're more than likely to go on to a level two um, a teaching assistant course. Um, when do we come to college? Is it in September? So if keep an eye on the website for that, um, it will tell you when the, um, the study programs um, are, you can apply online for the study programs now. Generally, yes, it's September and the days are on each of the programs. So generally, the it's a phased um, start to the September. So we generally get our young students in, first of all, and then our mature students as well. Um, just to make sure I don't miss any. Do I need to do GCSE Maths and English to do this course over 19? Um, you need to have some level of English so that you can cope with the assignments. A lot of our students, our mature students, opt to do the English and maths alongside the course because ultimately, um, for especially if you're going into supporting teaching and learning, you are part of the education. So you need to have your skills at a, 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 good, a good level. So um, but you don't always have to have your maths and English. So that is something that... Um, you would have a discussion with the person in so apply online when it's available and then we can have all those conversations. Okay, so I've been a swimming teacher for 30 years, but recently I've been helping out in a nursery. Would it be okay to do the level three early years? So I would say you're probably looking for the um, early years workforce as a mature student. I would say that you would need to do the level two because it is... Um, you're, you need to gain that level two experience, although you'll have that knowledge and understanding of communicating with children because you've been working with them for, for 30 years. It's actually those um, underlying units of work, um, such as safeguarding and children's health, they're the sort of ones that you would need to be doing. So I would say at this point, without speaking to you, generally it would be a level two and then a level three. But remember, you can get employed within a setting with a level two. So I'm 22 years old and I would like to apply for the level two early years. OK, so there's links on the website for this. Um, so, yeah, and, and there's different um, settings as well, different campuses where we're holding that. So you just need to decide which campus you would like to go to and then you can apply. So I worked as a physical education teacher in India between 2004. I'd like to take up an education sector job. Uh, what do I need to do now? So um, I would say, see if your um, teaching qualifications can be translated by NARIC to see what the um, equivalent is in the UK system. I, that would be the first thing I would say to you. And then you'd have that information when you um, come for an interview. It depends whether you want to go into primary or secondary as a teaching assistant or progress on to a higher level teaching assistant, or you want to teach in um, colleges. If you were, if you wanted to teach 19 plus, you would possibly look at the level three award in um, education and training. So maybe that is something you would look on, but again, Go onto the website, have a look at these different, you know, it breaks it down. What, what do I need to do? And but for you, I would say maybe to get a translation of NARIC that you can get done. So do you need to have a qualification for a mature student? OK, so um, that's linking back probably to are you saying about the maths and English. Um, Many of our students don't have the maths and English when they start, say, a level two supporting teaching and learning course, um, but they realise that if they want to stand out from other students, um, they then join a maths and English alongside the, the STNL programme or the early years programme. So it's up to you, but you would have a written, um, a short written task, an informal written task um, at the interview, just to make sure that you'd be able to cope with the amount of um, assignments that you're given as well. 
So is it good if you have previous experience with working with children for level three diploma child canary? Yes, 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 yes. All experience working with children. And that might be if you're a 16 year old, it might be that you've had some experience um, uh, babysitting or helping family members. So it is good to have previous experience. But on the other side, we we all we also have students that have no experience. So they come into class, they, they do their GCSEs, they're really excited because they've um, they've got their five GCSEs and I say, yes, come on to my two year course because that gives you the UCAS points to go on to higher education. Um, and that's really exciting because you, you know, you come from your secondary school and you're able to use your GCSEs to start this course and you can see your pathway starting. So, yeah, any experience, but some don't let that put you off if you haven't got an experience, because like I said before in the session, we find you a placement. Um, so and that's when you start um, getting that experience. So when do we get interviews? Interviews generally, um, not sure, hopefully Mark might be able to post something in there, but we sort of uh, May, June time, um, we, we start some interview processes then. When we come back in, um, so August, so generally, once the GCSE results are published, that's our first day of interviews. Now, I know this year it's slightly earlier, the results day, so I'm not quite sure. But if you're looking um, for August, well, I would always say apply online, show your interest. So we've got you um, in the system. I know for my level, my, my courses, I try to um, get in contact with people if they've applied and just had that um, that contact. So the interviews could be before um, August or it could be after. It depends on what course you're on. Yeah, can I just pop in there? Um, yeah. It's just that I think you're absolutely right, Tina. Um, because it's a strange year this year, I think if everybody applies first, that's the best thing. And then um, the admissions team will be in touch very, very soon. And then they'll, they'll be able to advise you about when the interviews will actually be. But um, between us two, we're, we're not actually sure yet because this is quite a strange year. Yeah, thank you for that, Mark. So, um, but again, if you have any questions, email, email the course leader um, and just keep an eye out on the website. Um, so I've said it interests me now, I must start level one and want to work in nursery. Can I enroll in childcare course at level one? Yep, so at level one, um, I've just got it written down here. We've got short courses, um, level, so we're looking at mature courses, I think, for that. Thank you for taking putting that back down. I'm assuming that you're a mature level learner for that. So we have an introduction to early years at Wood Street and Collingdale. That's an 18 week course that you could go on to that. Um, you want to go into early years. So that's, yes, I would say you can either do the 18 week short course or you can apply for the year course, which is September to the June, which is a diploma in caring for children level one. So um, maybe apply for both and then have your interview and the, um, the lecturer will speak to you and then they'll let you know. Thank you for that question. Are there any evening child care courses? I'm interested in learning level two early years. No, not at the moment. There isn't any. Um, evening the only ones that um the only evening class that we're doing at the moment is a level three award in education and training so but watch this space with online um learning as we've been doing this year we'll see what we're going to be offering in the near future so just keep checking our website for that but um yeah online courses are always um wanted but yeah keep an eye on our website for that thank you OK, is the college offering foundation degrees for child care? Um, if yes, is this part time or full time? So generally, a foundation degree is classed as a full time course. Um, I'm not quite sure what the um, course the college is offering for foundation degrees um, with in the forthcoming year. Mark, are you able to help me with that a little bit? 
Yeah, I'm afraid it's watch this space again, just yeah. very much as you said. I mean, at the moment, we're not offering any foundation degrees for childcare, but um, I guess this may change over the next couple of months. So um, yeah. just keep but, looking at the website. What I would say for that, if you are interested in the foundation degree, you can use my details for that. Um, register your interest with me um, and I'll, I'll keep your name, keep your details. And if something, if, if things are, because things are changing so much at the moment, um, I can contact you. So if, uh, Annette, please email me our, um, next week and I'll keep your name if that's OK. Thank you for that. OK, so uh, good afternoon to you too. I've studied level one childcare and young people setting and level two adult healthcare. Do I have a chance to go to a teaching assistant level three? OK, um, as course leader for the teaching assistant, I, I like people to do that level two. I would need to have a conversation with you to see what units of work that you did within the adult healthcare and also what experience you've had working, volunteering in school settings. So although you would have already have had a level two, it may not give you the underlying um, information that you need for the level three. And sometimes people struggle, they think, oh yes, I can do the level three. But actually once we start, where well, you've missed that, that year of actually being in placement as well. So the answer to that is, a, have you been in placement? And that would be, that would um, change my answer for that. Thank you. Um, I have functional skills level two English and maths. Can I join primary school? Um, when you meet, when you say primary school, I think you're referring to the supporting teaching and learning, maybe the teaching assistant course. Functional functional skills level two English and maths. Yeah, so I would say the level two supporting teaching and learning would be um, suitable for you for that one. Thank you. Do I need to do GCSE maths and to do a course over? So again, um, you don't have to. It's um, preferred for you to have some level of maths and English because obviously you're going to be helping students. Sorry, your question has just disappeared off the page. Um, so, Rebecca, what happens if I don't get the GCSE grades at the end of the summer to do the childcare course? I'm 16 and unfortunately school exams not happening. OK, that's an excellent, excellent question. And that's a lot of people going to be ask, asking this. So apply for the course that you are predicted to meet. So if you are predicted to get three GCSEs at um, a four and above, apply for the level two if you are predicted to get five GCSEs four and above apply for the level three now what you've got to um, decide Rebecca is what you want to do after do you want to come to college for one year and then go to work if so apply for the workforce early years workforce that's a one year course um, but you would need your five GCSEs for that if you're looking a bit further and you think, you know what, I want to go to university, please apply for the two year course. So we're looking for five GCSEs, looking for English maths, English language and five. Apply because we'll have that conversation. It might be that you missed maths or English by a tiny, tiny little bit and that we might give you the authorization to resit that in the first year. But that depends on the um, each case. So that so please apply for the one that you're predicted. And remember, you can apply for two grades, two two courses. So you know, and that'll be fine. Okay. So hopefully that answers your question. But I'll message me if it doesn't. Um, I've applied but still have not received an offer. So you won't have received an offer just yet we'll, you'll have a um, you'll be invited to an interview okay and we're not doing the interviews yet so you you're you are in our system and um, when we start our interviews then um, you, you'll you'll get a date to come in for an interview um, sometimes we'll give you um, a subject to exam offer so sometimes you get a subject to exam offer Hi Kelly, I'm a mature student and hold a degree course. In, I work at the nursery now as supporting staff. Can I go to straight to level three diploma for early years course? 
Um, okay. Again, it depends on how long you've worked in a nursery. It may well be that you can speak to, um, so you want to do the level three diploma early years course. Yep, so you would just, you would need to speak to the lecturer about that and just say, you know, when you come for your interviews, bring everything with you, bring all your certificates, bring all of your evidence. And then you can say that this is what I've been doing and you have that conversation, but apply online and you'll be, in, you'll be um, invited for an interview. Thank you, Kelly. So Aisha, can I apply for a level two bef before doing a level one in early years? So yes, you can apply. Um, are you? So this would be, it depends if this, again, it's really helpful if you let me know whether it's a, um, a study programme 16 to 18 or a mature programme. So if you are a, um, a young student, 16 to 18, the levels that you go on for childcare depends on your GCSE grades. So if you're, it depends on your, if you get, if you only get a few GCSE grades and they're low, you need to be starting at the level one, then moving on to the level two and then moving on to the level three, because that's by then you would have passed those maths and English, you know, so really sometimes it's nice to actually start at level one, then to move to level two, because by the time you get to level three, you have so much knowledge and understanding. You've had so many, um, placement hours as well. So that just depends on whether you're um, a mature or a, a young student. Hi, I finished level one childcare. I'm doing functional skills. So from September, I want level two. Um, I'm working in nursery by agency. So please let me know when to enroll. So um, you're a mature student. So at the moment we have um, enrollments open for um, applications open for the young students. Uh, Mark, when are I, a mature students able to apply online? Um, again, I'm not quite sure <laughs> when they'll be. Uh, if you apply for the courses we have on the website now, then um, then that should be fine because your details will be taken. Good. And then so we can make sure that we don't lose your application, but everybody should be applying as soon as possible. Thank you for that. So uh, I hope you don't mind me calling you in, Mark. It just makes it a little bit helpful. So yeah, apply well, for that level um, two. People wonder who I am, but I am here yeah. in, the, in the background. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. So I'm, I'm working as a lunchtime and playtime supervisor in a primary school for one and a half years. Can I start at level three? I graduated master's degree here 10 years ago, but I'm not native English. So let's, um, let's have a conversation. Because obviously, as um, as a course leader, it's something that I need to have a conversation about. But definitely, you've you've got lunchtime and playtime. Um, it depends what your degree was in, what units, you, modules you would have covered. Um, the as a playtime supervisor, the only thing with that is you haven't actually been in classrooms. And for the teaching assistant, you'd need to be supporting those um, the, those English sessions, those math sessions, um, science, all the curriculum. So that's the only thing. So it might be worth you trying to get some hours in a classroom. If I finish ESOL level one, I want to be a teaching assistant. What course shall I be doing? So um, ESOL level one, so you're either going to be um, doing the preparing to work in schools at level one, which is a short course, 18, 18 weeks, and then you progress on to the level two. So if you apply for the preparing to work in schools, um, if we feel that you are able to do the level two, we will just put you on the level two. Thank you. Where can I apply to register for the course? So go on to our main page, go on to courses, find childcare um, and education, Look for that big orange button so you can apply online. Thank you. Hi, Tina. Many thanks. For, thank you. Will this session also cover PGCSE? I saw a reference to it on your website, but could not find any further information. Again, this is something that is slowly evolving, Millie, and changing as we speak. So really exciting things happening on the horizon. So I, I haven't got all of the information, but Please, would you email me in the week, please? And I'll, I'll come back to you about that. Thank you very much. Um, 
you've studied ESO Level 2 and Rest Level 1. OK, so just decide on go into our website, have a look at the courses, decide on which course you'd like to go on, whether it's an early years course or whether it's a um, supporting teaching and learning. And it depends on what your level you are. If you're if you're just starting out and uh, maybe you're lacking a little bit of confidence, start at level one, build yourself up with confidence. Thank you. So how about the course fee for level two? That, dis that depends on your own personal situation. Um, so if you are in receipt of um, support, then you can show evidence for this and some 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 courses you don't have to pay for, they are government funded, but it depends on your personal situation. Um, I did not study about childcare before, my English not perfect, I want to study part time. I would say if you want to start out in childcare, I would start out, um, if you want to go into early years, do the 18 week course, the introduction level one introduction um, and that is at Wood Street or Collindale that's a perfect introduction to early years thank you for that um, level three ESOL not past GCSB again that depends on what you're applying for so look at um, look at the different courses um, you know start at level one with the lecturers and the teachers are really good if if you come in for an interview we will place you at your perfect course. There is always a course for everyone. So please don't think, I don't know what to do. Apply for, get into the system, get yourself an interview. So sometimes I'll meet with someone and as I'm talking to them, I think, well, actually they're not that interested in supporting and teaching and learning or early years. So I'll hand them over to my colleague or I'll, I'll put them into another department. We will guide you through the system. Hi, Can I that yeah, in there course. again? please Tina um, also if you look at our ESOL pages on the website the ESOL department also run childcare courses at level one so that might be appropriate to do ESOL and childcare together yeah. thank you for that okay hi Lena um, I worked with children for a long time in various settings as a nanny as a nursery assistant entertainer and performer wonderful I want to work privately as a nanny with special needs children I've done level two cash I would like to have some knowledge about children's development so I can support with homework. It's very, um, so you've done the level two. You could possibly um, consider the level three support in teaching and learning because that gives you all of the um, support in teaching and learning in school. So that's all your English, your maths. You've got some SE in there. So, but again, we'll just have to look at that level two, understanding learning difficulties. That would be so transferable. Um, and it just gives you a broader CV when you're going for those jobs. You've already got a broad CV. I can see that you've got that experience. So I think for you, you have lots of experience. Um, so definitely I, I, I could have a conversation with you about the level three diploma, supporting teaching and learning. Um, and that would give you evidence that you can support at a certain level. Thank you for that. Can I do the over 19 course part time? There are um, mature courses at part time. So I've just gone through those with the session. Go on to our website, click on, uh, there's so many courses again, level one, level two, level three, all part time courses. So would I need to arrange a placement before applying for level two support in teaching and learning? If so, how many hours? Good question. 12 hours a week. So generally with the level two, you have um, one day in class. So generally that's 9.30 to 1.30. And then you'll have 12 hours within that placement setting. It's always good to arrange your placement before, if you can, before you come for your interview. That's another tick to your name. Yes, you've got a placement. Generally, we would say you would need um, to secure your placement before starting in September. You wouldn't be able to carry on with the course without a placement because the two are merged. So 12 hours placement and your placement. So yes, if anyone is looking for support in teaching and learning, start trying to uh, find placements now. Uh, do you know what grade I need for maths? Um, 
it depends on what, I don't know, it's like a, a broken record, it depends on what course you're going for. Um, if a level one, you need a grow, um, so if you're looking for a level three, you need five GCSEs at grade four and five. If you're looking at level two, you're looking three GCSEs at grade three. So again, click on the website, go into each, you know, just spend some time going into the, um, the courses and they will tell you exactly what um, you'll need. But just apply online, have that conversation at the interview, it'll be fine. We will, we will um, show you where to go. Okay, so um, I finished childcare course level one, I'm doing functional skills. Um, okay, again, you, you're um, applying online through our website. Um, you're doing childcare level one. So if you're doing a level one course in childcare, then we love you to progress onto the level two. So that, that is something I would say, speak with your, um, if, you've, if you've already finished it, okay. If you just apply for the level two and then an interview, you can bring your certificate for the level one uh, and your functional skills as well. So bring that to the um, interview. OK, so. A young leader for guides and teach young children martial arts for three. I also started babysitting before COVID. So I um, I'm assuming that you're a maybe a young learner, 16 to 18. So the, it depends on your GCSE grades. Apply for the course that you're predicted. So if you're predicted five GCSEs at grade four or five above, go for the level threes. OK, um, apply for it, because if you don't get them, we, we can just have that conversation and you can be doing the level two instead. Apply for what you're predicted. I have. Uh, how to become further education teacher work in college. So that will be the level three award in education and training. And that's the um, like a, an award. It's, it's a short course. It's 12 weeks online. That is an evening course at the moment, six till nine. Um, and that's teaching further education. So that is your level three award in education and training. Thank you for that. How to apply for teacher training. It depends where you want to teach. If you want to teach in primary, we're not we, we don't we're not doing that currently. If you want to teach in further education, it's the same one as before. Level three award in education and training. That is your first step on the ladder. Um, if you're doing if you want to do teacher training, it depends how far you are in your training. You may what you might need to do a level three diploma with me, supporting teaching and learning before you go on to higher education. Yep. Um, the contact details, I think Mark will bring up my contact details again afterwards. Thank you. Um, OK. I would say apply for the courses that you're interested in. We are very good at putting you on the right course. I'm not quite sure which course you're interested in, but just have a look on the website and apply for the course that you think you meet the requirements and you apply and then in the interview, but just apply online. So I've applied for childcare level one full time for next September. I've received an email saying application, but received, but not heard anything else. Will I, will I be off, offered a place? So yes, you are now in our system. Um, you'll probably be offered a place subject to your exam um, results. So don't worry, you are in the system, you will be contacted. I don't have experience with teaching, but I could try. I also mind voluntary work with Heart Foundation. Um, okay. And where uh, I couldn't find a place where to make volunteer and where I could go studying in teaching assistant. Okay. So um, I would say um, start trying to look for a volunteer. It might be difficult to try and get into schools at the moment while they're, while they're settling back in, um, but they'll certainly be looking for September. And, um, you know, they once they've met you, um, so, Apply for the level two teaching assistant course, supporting teaching and learning, and then we'll take your application from there. Um, but just bear in mind, you'll be looking for a placement in September. Hi again. Um, I've been working in nursery in a school setting with help from the teacher taking observations. Do you still recommend the level three early years or the level two? This is the summer teacher. So, no, I, I, I'm happy for you to double check. So, um, I see I know the the level three 
lecturer would say that she prefers people to be doing the level two. I'd say to you with, you know, if you if you want to do the early years, apply for the early years workforce at level three, apply. And then at interview, we can move you, um, keep you on that course or move you to the level two if you haven't got, if you don't meet that um, criteria. But again, Victoria, you can message me. I really don't mind if you email me next week, I'll, I will come back to you. Okay, what grade do I need for maths for me to get into the course I want? So again, if we're if we're looking at um, if you are a young a young student, sixteen to eighteen, generally for the level ones, you need two GCSEs at grade two or three, including math um, English language. Level two as a benchmark, you're looking at three GCSEs, grade three, that includes maths, and you're looking for a level four for your English language. For your level three courses, you're looking for five GCSEs, which includes your maths and English. Hope that explains that. Thank you. Hi, can you explain more about the 16 year old starting the childcare courses um, as it's mostly about 19 plus? Uh, what type of course units for the level two teachers? OK, so we've got a couple of questions in here. So the 16 year old starting the childcare courses. So that was at the beginning of my session where I went through the level one courses, the level two courses and the level three courses. Um, so if you're looking for a level two course, we do a diploma for the early years practitioner. So you need three GCSEs there. Um, what type of course units for the level two teaching assistant courses? So the teaching assistant courses are for mature learners. So Kyra, I'm not sure if you're a, um, if you fall into the bracket of 16 to 18, or you're going into the mature bracket of 19 plus. So the teaching assistant courses are for 19 plus. Um, how is a student, oh, how's the student um, assessed? You're assessed within your setting. So you'll have your, um, you'll have your, you study in the college and then you have your placement. Um, you're assessed within your placement with an observation, but the, we do formative assessment in class and you have assignments. So you're doing some um, summative assessments through assignments and observations as well. Oh, OK, Kyra, thank you. I'm going to come back to you in a second. If I have got only English functional level one and if you haven't got maths function, am I allowed to apply for the level two certificate supporting? Yes, apply for the level two. Let's have the interview. I'm sure it will be fine. Let's have that interview and we can see where you are. There's always a, written, a very short written informal task to do for all learners anyway. Thank you. So I've worked as a volunteer in a primary school before COVID. I'm a mature student. I've been offered a placement once I'm on the course. Great, fantastic news. I've applied for the early years course part-time for September. Is that the right course? So if you want to do, if you want to be working in a primary school, you need to be doing the supporting teaching and learning. So apply for a different course. So if you're aiming to work in a primary school, that's from age five to 19. That's what the qualification, the early years courses are for naught to five. OK, so it depends what. So if you do the early years course, generally, you're not going into primary schools. If you do the primary school teaching assistant, you're not going into early years. So for you, as you've done volunteering in primary school and you've got a placement, you're a perfect candidate to come on to the supporting teaching and learning um, at level two. Then looking on to the level three afterwards, um, which will give you um, even further to go on to higher um, education if you want to. Feel free, Andrea, to email me about that question. So Kyra, yes, I fall into the 16. So you're in the 16 to 18. Definitely. Um, so you've got um, a contact there, Joanna Murchison. Um, she's the course leader for all of the um, all of the early years programs, the childcare ones. But if you think you're going to get your five GCSEs, contact me and I'll I'll keep in uh, contact with you. I like to keep in the students that are coming onto that two year program. I like to have that contact with you leading up to your GCSE results. Hopefully that here that helps. Thanks, Tina. This has been really interesting. There's lots to think about. Thank you, A. Howard. Um, just message me. I'm really happy to 
um, answer any emails. Um, thank you very much, Laura. Thank you very much, Andrea. Thank you.